evening Olympic women's gold medalist. Canada is another team to watch at the World Cup, and the Canadians are demanding a new contract with the Canadian Soccer Association before departing for Australia and New Zealand. Canadian legend Christine Sinclair spoke out yesterday, telling Canadian media that they want a new deal settled for at least before the Women's World Cup, before they travel to the tournament. The World Cup is less than a month away, and it's the latest in a series of recent events over pay equity they have faced with the Canada Soccer Association. Alexis, Canada won the Olympic gold medal, and they don't have a CBA deal settled yet. Are you getting on that plane if you're on this team? No. No, and something has to be done. I get that the Canadian national team or Canadian soccer is going through a financial crisis. They cut training camp days. They cut full training camp windows. They cut the number of players and staff that were invited to camps. Um, recently, it was said that uh, this is from the players. We've been told quite literally, this is a quote, quite literally, that Canada soccer cannot adequately fund the women's national team. And they have waited to tell us this until now, when we are less than six months from the World Cup. This is an absolute embarrassment, especially when you have three players on the team that have been nominated for a Ballon d'Or in uh, Jesse Fleming, Christine Sinclair, and Ashley Lawrence. This is, they won the Olympics. Uh, this is a team that should be on the up. The Canadian men's team is on the up. The Canadian women's team is finally getting recognition. This is an absolute embarrassment. Mm -hmm. why, why is this oh. happening always right before the World Cup, even even for the men's, yeah. there was you had the issues World Cup in coming up. To too. Like, the, you don't get on the plane. You send you no. send a message. But how we, hard we is that, Chuck? Because it is very hard. It's easy to You're, say, and it's no, Christine it's Sinclair's say, yeah. last one. In the grand scheme one of problem. things, things aren't right, and we have to do something moving forward. But you're a player. You've worked your entire life for this. It could be your first call up. It could be your last mm -hmm. one. How difficult is it to really make that decision and to have everybody on the same page? Well, I think what goes into it is. It's bigger than yourself. You have to think about the future of the sport and, and what you mean to a number of people in this country. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're going up there and you're not treated well, you're not respected, you're not given, you know, just in terms of, of what you deserve, then you, you have to say, oh, I have to make a stand. Th those, that's how you make change is, mm -hmm. is taking a stand like this. And, and I feel for, for the Canadian men's and women's teams because they deserve more. You see what they're doing and what they've done. It's... Do you think it will be resolved, Jenny, before the World Cup? Do you see this Canadian national team getting on the plane together and going to Australia? I mean, I hope they do because there are benefits of going to the World Cup. There is money with that involved for each player. You know, this, is going, this is money is going directly to the player, not the federation, which is a very important difference. Um, but... They have been protesting for a while now. This has been at least six months. You know, they sat out of She Believes Cup practice before the tournament saying that they were going to sit out and then they ended up playing in the tournament, you know, begrudgingly saying, we want to come to a conclusion to this and they still have not. What are we, like three, four months after that? Um, so I feel like if they were willing to come to the table and figure it out, they would have by now. And now it's a matter of them to really take a stand and say, you guys are going to look really bad when we don't play in the World Cup. Mm -hmm. We don't get on this plane because you guys are not willing to give us the resources that we need. Sponsors need to step up. Absolutely. Well. Sponsors in Canada need to step up and support the, the women's team. And how much of a distraction is this? Because it's a, such a shame, because even if they do go and things are better or resolved, it's still taken away massive attention off this team and taken a lot of energy and emotion from the players as well. Well, it, it's, and they're not the only country that's had, had to, to do- Jamaica. Some dr drastic things. France. Yeah. Spain, who, yeah. who are still missing. Mape Leon didn't, mm -hmm. didn't sign. She didn't join this team. So the Spanish team. Women are, are taking a stand. And you, you have to look at what is being done to bring, raise the game and raise the, the, the quality of, of everything. So for me, again, this is one of those, those big moments if you're on this women's national team saying, we have to take a stand together. I wish it was, uh, what was it, when Russia got sanctions, there were, there were considerations of, like, the players from the country of Russia, as opposed to saying the Russian national team. I wish there was yeah, a sponsor the, that would step the Olympics. up. Yeah, I wish there was a, a sponsor that would step up and allow these Canadian women to go play as the players from Canada, as opposed to playing for the Canadian flag, because they deserve to be there. This is probably Christine Sinclair's last World Cup. They deserve to be there. They deserve to play. They obviously have their, their it's, I don't want to call it a golden generation, but it seems like everything is, not, is, is coming up for them uh, positively. They should be there. They've such a high as well yeah. with, with what they've done, and we've seen them turn their shirts inside out on numerous occasions. Now it's clear that they want to be there, but not for their country. Jenny, which what, is what would you game. suggest? Oh, gosh. 
Just, just to, to get to your point after this, but this has been across the board for the Women's World Cup in general. So FIFA president um, spoke about how the broadcast deals that were given to um, the Women's World Cup were, I think, 20 times lower than what is offered for the men's. Um, they're like one to ten million dollars is offered for the broadcasting deals for the Women's World Cup when it's like a hundred to two hundred million dollars for the Men's World Cup. And these are the same exact broadcasters, you know, offering that money. So he has basically said we're not going to take unacceptable offers from the five big um, European UK um, markets. Yes, exactly. Poppy, thank you. Um, and basically all of them had to put higher bids up. So everybody taking a stand. If you want to be involved in it, they eventually, you know, do come around is what it seems like. Um, so. You know, Alexis mentioned the Jamaican national team also coming out and saying that they have not been able to train, they have not had the money to get together and, and do any of the things that they need. You mentioned Spain, France, all of these countries. I think as a whole, the women are finally, you know, saying, you can't do this without us. You know, there's no tournament without us, there's no team without us, and they're taking a stand and saying, the only thing that we can do is pull away and say, we're not going to offer you our services until you give us what we deserve, and I think that's incredibly powerful. Yeah. And you know who started all this? The U.S. women. Yeah, I was just about to say they went through this, didn't they? But years ago, so it's it's so sad to see that it's still happening, and now other countries are having these same pains that the U.S. women's national team had to have and had to fight for and had to miss major competition for, as well years ago. So we'll see what happens uh, with Canada. Hopefully, it can all get resolved before the World Cup.